Shalom, Salam. I'm Susan Abramson, the rabbi of Temple Shalom Emmeth in Burlington, Massachusetts, the author of Chala, A Jewish Guide to the Torah, and the Rabbi Rocket Power series of Jewish children's books featuring my alter ego, Rabbi Rocket Power, the first ever female rabbi superhero. In today's episode, we will zoom in on the Islamic Center of Burlington. It began in a storefront on Cambridge Street in the 1990s, then moved to the old Knights of Columbus Hall on Lexington Street in 2004. They are Sunni Muslims, many from India, others are Arab, Bengali, Somali, and American-born, and live in Burlington and surrounding towns. Over the years, the community has suffered a number of acts of vandalism, most recently in November 2015. I learned firsthand the effects negative stereotyping and lack of understanding has had on members of the community. We're normal people. I play basketball, I play football. People are bullying about wearing hijab because they don't know anything about what we're supposed to do. We don't wear a hijab to school because everyone will know our religion. I just want people to know that we're, we're all humans just like they are. In the media, there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of things that are actually the opposite. Islam does not condone violence or ISIS. A lot of times in school they make jokes like they'll be like, oh, Allah Akbar and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> like I used to be like, oh yeah, God is great, I know. People come to me all the time and say, go back to your country, but you know, I've learned to be the better person and to just like smile back. Today the Islamic Center's Imam, Shaquil Rahman Mia, will teach us the basic tenets of Islam and give us a tour of the building. We will learn about Muslim customs, traditions, prayer rituals, the Quran, and hear heartfelt testimonies. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking. We're still holy peace. Where are we going in this world of woe? So much suffering and misery. Our hearts are longing for the endless Home of peace and love and harmony. Oh. Shaquille, it's a total pleasure for me to have you here today. One reason I wanted to do an episode about Islam and the Islamic Center as one of my first episodes is because there's so much uh, stereotyping and misunderstanding and, and, and myths about. Islam that I, I wanted the community to really understand what Islam is all about and, and to meet people who are Muslim and, and so people can understand that we're all human beings yeah. equally uh, made in the image of God. So, so um, I wanted to ask you first of all how you got to be an Imam. Bismillah rahman rahim In the, the name of God the most merciful and the most kind. Uh, first, uh, peace be upon all of us who follow guidance, right? Because Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, for the first about majority of my teenage life, I didn't really practice Islam. We were born Muslim, but we thought of it as something as a culture. What would happen later on, though, is that uh, you know there would be like this really bad, hollow feeling inside. I would get so depressed, and I wouldn't know why I was so depressed. And I remember this really pitiful state that I was in. And it was like at the bottom of the bottom, the lowest of the low. And at just one time I was just saying, oh, the true Lord, please just guide me. And I, I need some help here. Mm -hmm. So in my junior year of high school, uh, there was an imam in our local mosque. And he would just be opening up the floodgates to us about Islam. And this is like a completely new experience. No longer was it the same cultural Islam. You know, it was like dispelling all the myths about Islam for us. And I myself personally spent a lot of time with him. And I grow like he's like a father to me, like a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And so he really pushed me forward. He said, while you're in college, when I was studying in City College, getting my degree in psychology, he said that you should go pursue Islamic studies and go to a madrasa, which madrasa in the, in the, in the media is like a really like a negative word, but it just means an Islamic seminary, a place where you can study Islam. So in about six years, we studied uh, the Arabic grammar. We studied syntax. We studied uh, uh, morphology. Then we moved into higher sciences about Islamic law, which is just the, which is what we call Sharia, which is just the name of the law. Like for example, you have Roman law or Catholic law, it's mm -hmm. called Sharia law. Then we studied the traditions, the narrations of the words and the sayings and the actions of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And then finally culminating in studying the Quran. During my years of study, I actually did uh, a bit of, uh, I was an Imam, which is, Imam means uh, a religious leader. 
someone mm -hmm. who takes care of the community, more specifically the one who leads the prayers, the five times prayers, mm -hmm. and the uh, Friday, the Juma, the Friday sermon that we have, he's the one who conducts that. And, and so I, I really wanted to ask you to explain to us what the basic tenets of Islam are. It all really boils down to the statement of that we say in Arabic is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, which this basic principle sta statement is that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So our understanding is that there's no deity, there's no object of worship and an object of adoration except Allah Ta'ala, except Allah the Almighty. And to us Allah is what well, we can translate as God in English, just for to get an understanding about it. To us God has no father, no son, no wife, no partner. Absolutely everything is under his control and his dominion. All power goes back to him. Good and evil come from him. He sent human beings into this world to take care of the world. In reality, it's to govern the world under his authority, whatever he said for us to do. So he sent the first human, which is Adam. And so we'll find that Adam, peace be upon him. There's a lot of similarities between us and the other Abrahamic faiths. Mm -hmm. right? Christianity and Judaism also believe in Adam. We believe in Noah. We believe in uh, uh, Jacob, Joseph. We believe in Isaac. We believe in Ishmael. We believe in Abraham. We believe in Moses. We believe in uh, Jesus too. Peace be upon them all. It's part of our faith to believe in them and to love them because they are the greatest human beings who ever walked on the face of the earth as prophets of God. We believe that the original book that Moses was given, salam, peace be upon him, which is the Torah, we believe in that book as well. The we Torah. Believe the yeah. Torah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we believe in the Gospels of Jesus, mm -hmm. peace be upon him as well, that he was given it by God, by Allah. And same thing with the Psalms of David, we also believe in those books as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so each prophet came with the message and each one had a different structure of law. And it all ended with, it boiled down with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad is the seal of all prophets. He is pro the final prophet to come down. Every prophet gave a glad tiding about him. And it's mentioned in their books about the Prophet Muhammad. And this is what we, uh, who we believe as the final messenger that Allah has sent down into this world. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He came down with the final revelation which is the Quran. Mm -hmm which is this nice, compact, beautiful book. Every Muslim in the entire world, they devote themselves to memorizing it, to learning it, and to, be, and to study it. The subject matter which is mankind's relation with God Almighty, with Allah. So the relationship of man to his master. So it explains who Allah is, it explains what human beings, what they go through, and it explains every single aspect of their life. So we find that Islam is a way of life. It, in, it encapsulates the entire being. So we have laws about uh, <coughs> society, we have laws about f uh, family, we have laws about business, we have laws about how to govern a country, we have laws about uh, pra practically every field, even like about how cleaning ourselves and all these things. This, this religion is very comprehensive. The Quran is not a history book. People get this wrong. They think mm -hmm. it's a history book or a science book. It's neither of that. It's what? It's a book of lessons for human beings to understand how can they make their master happy and what makes their master makes Allah sad, what makes him uh, upset or angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll find stories and accounts of Moses, peace be upon him. And so for us, Moses is actually the prophet who's mentioned most in the Quran. Mm. Yeah, this is something that people don't, don't really know about. No, not so, at all. <laughs> He's mentioned over 70 times in the Quran. Again, like we have a lot of similarity. Mm. That's why I don't find myself to be uh, around like strangers when I'm around a Christian or a Jew. Isa, which means Jesus, right? Jesus, Prophet Jesus, alayhi salam. We believe in him as the Prophet of Allah, not the Son of Allah. The question I wanted to ask is about the five pillars of yeah. your faith. Uh, uh, five basic pillars of Islam. The first one being the testification of that there's none worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Mm -hmm. The second one is the, the five prayers, the five daily prayers, mm -hmm. which is uh, what we call salah. Then the month of Ramadan, fasting the entire month from sunrise to sunset. The fourth pillar is zakat, which is a charity that Muslims are obligated to give, which helps the poor and the needy. And lastly is to make the pilgrimage to Mecca to visit the House of Allah in Mecca. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you specifically because this is something, you know, which, which a lot of people say, uh -huh. you know, uh, is, that, is that the Quran is a book of war. So the concept of jihad, jihad literally means, in Arabic, it means to struggle, to mm -hmm. struggle. And so this concept of struggle is something that is predominant in all human beings. Islam is a way of life, uh, both dealing with the internal aspects and the external aspects. 
Internally, it's about spiritual purification, getting rid of the diseases of malice, of envy, of pride, of sloth, and all these other different spiritual sicknesses that we have. Externally, it's abiding by God's law and not doing those things which are forbidden, right? And avoiding mm -hmm. those harmful carnal desires. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah, when they were coming back from military campaign, he said, we are coming back from the smaller jihad to the bigger jihad. Mm -hmm. We're coming back from the smaller fight to the bigger fight. Because the smaller fight was fighting against like enemies on the battlefield. And the, the bigger jihad is actually to fight against our own desires. Mm -hmm. And so Islam, instead of just ignoring that war is not part of like human mm -hmm. beings, uh, the way we interact with each other or human civilization for that, for that matter, Islam, instead of just ignoring it, it actually decided to put down rules. It actually put down rules. So Allah Ta'ala says in His book, God says in His book, that whoever kills someone unjustly, then as if he has killed all of mankind. Mm -hmm. And whoever uh, helps uh, keep someone alive, as if he had kept all of mankind alive. So and, and you know, it's a, the interesting thing is that, that the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud, so it's exactly the same, same thing. Same thing, yeah. Right? If, if you save one <laughs> life, it's as if, if yeah. you save the entire world. And if you, if you take one life, it's as if you've take, killed the entire, the entire world. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of rules. You're not allowed to harm children. You're not allowed to harm innocent civilians. You're not allowed to kill women. You can't harm the elderly. You can't harm the rabbis or the priests. You can't harm any spiritual person. You can't destroy a, a synagogue, a church, a temple. You can't touch any place that... Uh, is considered sacred by the people. You can't touch those areas. You you can't force anyone to convert. You can't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of rules put down. Even to the point that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, you can't even touch the trees. So you're supposed to treat everyone with love. In the Quran, it mentions many times to love our neighbor. Mm -hmm. It says to even feed prisoners. It says to feed the poor. We're supposed to love uh, uh, non-Muslims. The Prophet Muhammad has taught us that the believer is the one who people trust with their lives and their possessions. Everyone should trust you. Everyone should have that much faith in you that you'll be so such a good person. Thank you so much for being here and uh, let's head over to the Islamic Center. So I'm thrilled to be here and I guess this is the front door and I see that that we've got a lot of security here. Yeah. So uh, I can't wait to see what's inside. Yeah, yeah, you're so welcome to come in. Let's go. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, this is the main entrance of the masjid, the mosque. Mm -hmm. And uh, this side on the left is the sister side mm -hmm. and on the right is the men's side mm -hmm. and so what we do is generally we take off our shoes but well, we're going to take a tour of the sister side first so this is where we put our shoes great so this is the main prayer hall for the sisters mm -hmm. and we also conduct classes for the children here as well uh -huh. so that's why all these partitions are here um, so this is the sister side and this is where uh, they would actually come in from in from that entrance, uh -huh. and they would come here to pray. Uh, these benches are actually used for the classes. Right, so the kids would actually come and sit here, and they'll place their Qurans, or they'll place their reading books here. Mm -hmm. And then the teacher would be sitting here as well. Women pray behind men, and that's just because of the, the concept that we have in Islam about gender separation. But there are bad humans out there, and there will be people who exploit and they'll uh, uh, abuse genders. The, the gender separation in Islam is, you know, it goes throughout from the societal level to our prayers as well. This is the men's section. Mm -hmm. And so generally we'll line up from the front and then once one line is completed, then another line, then another line. Mm -hmm. And there is the sister section over here. Again, like sisters generally pray just behind the men. Mm -hmm. And this is the partition that we use. It is what we call a mimbar. So mm -hmm. on Friday sermons, the Imam will actually step up here and he will sit on this and he will face the community and he will sit first, stand up, give the sermon which is in Arabic and then he will sit down. Yes, yeah, so this is where the Imam actually, he leads the prayer. This clocked out clock is the clock which tells us the time of the day and the prayers of the day, at what time they come in because again, Prayers are determined according to the position of the sun in the sky. Mm -hmm. So at Fajr, right, the first prayer is the sunrise prayer. Mm -hmm. Then Zuhr is the midday prayer. Yes. And then Asr, look at that, all the lights came out, it's great. And Asr is the third prayer of the day. Maghrib is at sunset. And Aisha is a little bit at nighttime. And Jumu'ah Jumu is our Friday sermon, uh, Friday prayer. That's when mm -hmm. this happens. This is the time limit because one prayer goes into the next. So you have this much time until 3.58 to pray Zuhr. So this is the Imam's office space, mm -hmm. which is positioned 
nicely so that people can actually see the imam when they come in. We believe in hand slaughtering animals. So this is done because animals have a life, right? So the only way you can actually take a life is by uh, the sacred act of uh, hand slaughtering. And so it's done with a prayer. You actually start with a prayer. You cut the neck, the, the neck of the animal, and mm -hmm. so you actually won't even feel the pain if you cut it properly. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is a big no. And wh why is that? It's uh, similarly like, again, everything is given to us by Allah. Whatever He says is what, what He wants. Mm -hmm. And a wisdom that we can get from it is that alcohol is something that steals someone's intellect away. Mm -hmm. It's as if they can act almost like an animal afterwards. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Shahid. I am currently elected president of the Islamic Center of Burlington. We have a board of directors here. Um, there are currently uh, uh, 10 to 11 board of directors. It's a non-profit organization. Um, so um, there are people, they donate money to, to, to the center. One of the reasons why we, uh, we sit on the floor in the mosque is because of the fact that we are servants of God. So we like to demonstrate our servitude towards Him. And so servants are normally lowly, they are humble, so they sit on the ground. And this is easier for us also when, we, when it comes to prayer, because we have to put our foreheads on the ground. And so it's not against like, the religious ethic to like, sit on a chair. People also pray by sitting on a chair if they cannot put their foreheads on the ground. One of the prophetic acts of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so he used to cover his head. So it's an optional act of worship. Everybody should be dressed humbly and simply and so that's why you see a lot of the males will wear long garments um, also when we pray we have to be fully covered. The concept of wearing the hijab is to denote modesty and to be free from the thought of being val uh, valued based on um, physical appearances rather than your um, character and intellect but you're also identifying yourself as a Muslim to the public and that is a great responsibility because you know whatever you say or do will be brought back to your religion. It's not an easy thing to do with society today and the media who has engraved this ideology that hijab um, is a sign of oppression and the hijab is actually the opposite you know it, it gives us freedom and it gives us the control of giving us the control of how we want to be perceived by the public and I think that's a great thing. What I'm wearing is called the niqab. Modesty is, I would say, is um, the six pillars of the sixth pillar of faith. It is more than just the headscarf or the clothes um, that people wear. It's a man. It's our mannerism, our character, the way we interact with the world. We have a school here where um, a lot of students, over 100, 150 students, they come here. Um, to learn the the basics of Islam and also the um, the Quran, uh, and there are also other Islamic studies. The classes are designed to help the kids uh, get ready to learn the Quran. So right now they're learning like beginner basic books, just about how pronouncing letters. Then they'll start to put the letters in combination, and right after that they'll be put slowly into the Quran, so that they'll be able to recite that book properly and thoroughly. The Quran made easy. E B, D. We're reading our Quran, so we make sure we're, we're fluent and we go to heaven once we read it, the whole thing. Hello, my name is Mahir, Mahir Khalifa, and I'll be doing a recitation of the Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. So Mahir recited Surah Ikhlas, which is the surah, which is the chapter about sincerity, and so it translates to say he is Allah alone by himself, Allah the one who everyone is dependent on, and he is dependent on none. He is he does not give birth, nor was he given birth to, and there's none like him. The purifying, purifying ourselves before the prayer. We're going to wash like the major parts of our body, important parts that we use daily. And so it's like as if we're cleansing these things from everything that happened outside so we can come in purely purified for what's about to happen inside. My name is Aman and I will be demonstrating on how to perform the before we pray. We start by washing our right and left hands three times up to our wrists. Take water in our mouth and gargle it in our mouth. 
Next, we clean our nose three times using water. You then wash your face three times. After washing your face, you rinse both elbows, up, you rinse both of your arms up to your elbows three times. After washing your elbows, you also uh, put water in, over your hair and you just do that once. And finally, to finish up, you wash both of your feet up to your ankles three times. The second pillar of Islam, which is prayer. We stood in front of God. We imagined that as if we are standing right in front of Him, and we are begging all of our needs. And we recite certain passages from the Quran. They are basically passages that are praising Allah first and foremost, and then certain advices that He gives us. So then right after we stand, we actually bow, and the bowing, there's a certain invocation that we read, basically again praising God. And then when we stand up again, we say to our Lord is all praise. And then going down into sajda, which is the prostration, putting our forehead on the ground, and then we sit down. And in between, that's when people can actually request with their own, what we call a dua, a supplication. What we pray to, what we, what we need, all of that we can ask at that time. And then you sit down again, um, and then you go down for sajda one more time. You put your head on the ground one more time, and then you say, All praise be to my Lord, the Most High. And it finally just ends with sitting, and then you give salam to the two angels that are there writing, the, the, uh, they have your book of deeds, so they're writing your good deeds and your bad deeds. We say thank you to Allah for all His blessings, and especially the blessings. We are alive, we are walking, we are breathing, uh, we are hearing, and we are talking. So these are all the blessings which we never, you know, uh, count in our daily routine. The holidays in Islam revolve around the Islamic calendar. In the ninth month of Islam, it's the month of Ramadan, which is very well known amongst even non-Muslims. And the last month is what we call Dhul Hijjah, the month of the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. So in the ninth month of Ramadan, in the ninth month, which is Ramadan, what we do is we fast the entire month. And as an act of celebration that God has forgiven our sins and He's happy with us, we celebrate on the day of Eid, which is a day right after the month of Ramadan. It starts in the tenth month, which is Shawwal. And so that entire day, the day is we eat, uh, we drink, and we have a good time with friends and family. The second holiday is in Hajj, the month of Hajj. So that's the time when everyone goes to Mecca to observe the pilgrimage, the rites <coughs> that the Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that he observed and his wife and his, his children that they observed. While that's happening in Mecca, while they're doing the Hajj in Mecca, what we're doing is we're celebrating because again that's a fact where God is sending down his enormous blessings on the world. So there are basically two holidays. They're both called Eid. They're both called Eid. One is Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr is the one after Ramadan and Eid al-Adha is the one after Hajj. My name is Zafra and we celebrate Eid and we get money. My name is Afreen. We celebrate Eid. We all go to Cambridge and visit my family. My name is Afreen and in Ramadan, I like fasting for like four or five days. My name is Afsa and I like fasting because it's a little hard and challenging. My name is Sumeya and I'd probably say my favorite holiday is Eid because after those 30 days of fasting every day for over 12 hours, it's a really nice break. I grew up in Chelsea. I was actually born in Cambridge. I accepted Islam in 2003. <clears throat> and the thing that interested me was the fact that um, I went to Catholic school since second grade. When I found out about Jesus was in Islam, I, like a light bulb went off in my head. This is uh, my freshman year in college. After I graduated, I said I wanted to compare the different religions. I wanted to be honest because it was a time of very difficult time in this country. This is right after right 9-11. But I said, you know what? Let me go to the mosque and because I'm really got these questions and that thing and I really would like to know what do you guys really say. My questions were were answered in a, a lot of things. Uh, the doors are always open. It, you can come and eat with us in Ramadan. You can come at any time. Unfortunately, the thing is uh, the media might be pro the best thing. What I was taught when I was a kid is go to the source. You know, I, I don't really, I'm not really about second hand, so I'd rather go sit with a person that says they are a Muslim or whoever, or they are Christian, go talk to them. The thing about Islam that really attracted me 
was the consistent effort that a person has to make every day to pray five times a day. If a person is consistent with this prayer, then the life will change, the heart will change, everything changes. And if a person, even though it may seem difficult five times a day, if a person truly wants to make their Creator happy, their Creator will make it easy for them. And they'll put the pleasure that everybody's looking for, they'll put it in the most simplest thing, which is to just put your head on the ground. And when you're done, you realize how much you have. When I was non-Muslim, a friend of mine, he brought me, and what happened was, when I saw the people come together, black, white, Asian, rich, poor, young, old, everybody, they stand up on the line, toe to toe, or heel to heel, I should say. And there's no difference. Everybody is equal. Except for those people, the, the only one that's the better one is the one who has more faith and more belief. And I, I would recommend to anyone, please, please, this is a blessing to be able to, to, to speak to you. Uh, please look into Islam and without preconceptions. I hope you learned as much as I did and gained a better understanding of the Muslim community and Islam. May we strive to appreciate and respect each other as equals and in that way help bring salam, shalom, shanti, peace to our troubled world. No more bitterness, hatred or greed. Paradise is the place we need. I feel the peace, feel the peace inside, of me. inside of me. A complete Tranquility I remember Allah He remembers me Feel the peace Feel the breeze Fresh, pure, holy